I take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the Department of Sanskrit, University of Mumbai, which is celebrating the 60th year of its earthly existence. Today, I would like to talk about a work which I had done through the assistance provided by the University of Mumbai on a text called Shiva Raja Bhishek Prayoga and Shri Shiva Raja Bhishek Kalpatanu. But little of my talk today is the king with one kingdom but two coronations. So it is about the coronation procedure undertaken by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Not just once, but twice. So the text was edited by the former professor and head of the Department of Sanskrit University of Mumbai. Professor T.G. Mainkar. So I begin my talk. The coronation of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, the founder of the Maratha Empire, is a significant milestone in Maratha history son of Shahaji Raje Bhosle, an eminent Maratha chieftain, later designated as Maharaj by Adil Shah, Shivaji was thoroughly trained as an efficient ruler to rule over the Jahagirs. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj conquered land and forts for the smooth functioning of his Jahagirs. But this acquisition was considered as extension of his boundaries of the Jahagirs. Till his coronation, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was regarded as a ruler governing his territory. As he was an uncrowned monarch, he could not exercise and execute religious and social sovereignty. Therefore, coronation was was very significant in his life history. The significance of the ritual may be understood through the words of Charles Drekemer. De De I quote, Ritual provides a means of acting out and thus reduces strains and frustrations produced by certainties and rationally inexplicable occurrences of life. On the social level, it consolidates the, the values of the community, reminding individuals of shared purposes and representing in a simple dramatic form social and religious re relationship. I unquote. In other words, ritual stands for a form of religious activity which has symb symbolism and tradition deeply woven in it. Coronation is a ritual which stands for propitiation of gods, securing, uh, securing governing authority and a moral sanction for regulation of law and order in the kingdom. It establishes a firm relation between gods, king, priestly class and commoners. Now, we will come to the coronation is called Rajabhisheka. So, we will uh, try to understand the etymology of the word Abhisheka. The word Abhisheka is a verbal derivative of two Sanskrit components, namely prefix Abhi and Sheka, from the root Sitch. The prefix Abhi means to, towards, into, over, upon, 
and can be added to nouns as well as verbs. The second part, seka, is derived from the root sitch, which means to pour out, discharge, emit, shed, infused or poured into or on to emit, then to emit semen, impregnate, etc. To scatter small, to scatter in small drops, sprinkle, besprinkle or moisten with. Apte defines Abhisheka as sprinkling of what as sprinkling, watering, wetting, and bathing. Thus, Abhisheka is the right in which a person is invested with power by being sprinkled with sanctified water or oil or sacred ingredients, and it is an inauguration or initiation ceremony. To conclude, it is a consecration ritual of, bris of besprinkling or anointing primarily with water. Consecration. Consecration is one of the part of the ritual of royal installation of the Rajasuya described in Brahmanical literature of ancient India. Consecration is a solemn dedication to a special purpose or service, which is usually religious in nature. The word consecration literally means association with the sacred. Persons, places or things can be consecrated and the term is used in various ways by different groups. In brief, the king designate is the sacrificer who performs the ritual to endow him with royal power. It is believed that the priest may render a ritual effective only through knowledge of the nature of sacrifice. This knowledge has the power to install the king designate on his throne. The motives behind the practice of Abhisheka are complex and numerous, but we can find some hints through the Sanskrit Brahmanical literature. The Aitareya Brahmana mentions that this religious ritual known as Aindra Mahabhisheka was performed in order to acquire imperial glory and to define or confirm the, the divine status of the king. But originally, it appears to have ensured continuity of life and even immortality. So I will be going about as follows. First, we will be discussing the background behind formation. Then about the manual, which is the Shiva Raja Abhisheka Prayogaha. Then reasons for coronation second. Then study of rituals which are mentioned in the second coronation, which is the Shiva Raja Abhisheka Kalpataru, a narrative on coronation two. Prior to the coronation of Shivaji Maharaj, no Hindu monarch was a coronated king for a considerably long span of time. He had no precedence regarding local traditions of a Hindu king to fall back upon for its coronation. He was a descendant of the Sisodhiyas of Udaipur, but the prevalent Meva tradition was of no use to him as the ruler of Udaipur was a Mughal feudatory. Therefore, Shivaji Maharaj consulted Vishweshwara Bhatta, known as Gaga Bhatta, who hailed from Paithan, but a resident of Kashi, to design a detailed ritual for the coronation. This ritual became encoded in the form of a text with the title Shivaraja Abhisheka Prayoga. The ritual was performed from 29th of May to 6th of June, 1674. There are two editions of his text. Sri V. S. Bendre edited the text with an exhaustive commentary in English and Marathi, along with the references of mantras mentioned in it in 1959. Professor T. G. Mayankar from the University of Mumbai 
edited and published this text in 1974-75 as a part of the Chhatrapati Shivaji coronation centenary commemoration volume with a translation in Marathi by Professor S. B. Velankar. Now we'll move to the next part and that is regarding kingship. Kingship stands for power and authority to govern over land and people. It is an effort to distinguish between monarchy and kingship. Vladimir Volkov states that monarchy may be abruptly established, but it is not so with kingship. Unquote. The kingship is associated with legitimacy and sovereignty. It is associated with the moral and religious reference point, point of a broad range of groups who remain autonomous in terms of political, judicial, and administrative decisions. There are two theories regarding the origin of kingship. In the theory of the ritual origin of kingship, which proposes the internal origin of the institution, the problem of legitimacy is already solved. There is a specific person that is a king ruling a kingdom as his birthright and the kingdom has an heir to the throne who would succeed the throne after retirement or demise of the ruling king. In the second theory, which supports the external origin of kingship, the problem is to analyze the transition from monarch to king, the shift from a character originating as a result of conquest to one accepted by the group because of recognition of his exceptional nature or which makes him appear sacred and gives legitimacy in the eyes of the entire community. The present study in the course of discussion of the ritual text on coronation will delve into the propriety of either of these theories through the study of two texts related through the uh, through the study of two texts related to the coronation of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Now we'll discuss about the contents of the uh, of the ritual. The breakup of rituals during the coronation week, according to Shiva Raja Bhishaka Prayoga, is as follows. On 29th May 1974, the thread ceremony of Shivaji Maharaj qualifying him as a regular Kshatriya for the Honorable Holy Coronation occurred. On 30th May 1674, there was Vinayaka Shanti and initial sacred rites. On 31st May 1674, Vinayaka Shanti was followed by Aindri Shanti and Aishasana sacrifice. The first June day had observance of further rituals. The second June 9, 1674 omitted all the day uh, as an inauspicious day. On 3rd June 1674, continuation of propitiatory, propitiatory observances was undertaken. On 4th June 1674, special sacrifice at night for averting calamity and propitiating the deity of destruction was undertaken. Sh Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was weighed against gold and number of other things which were immediately distributed as charity. On 5th June 1674, the last day of the initiating celebrations, preparations for the grand ceremony that is the crowning point of the coronation week, which according to the current mode of reckoning, falls within the range of early Saturday, 6th of June, 1674. The opening of the Prayoga is with salutations to Ganesh, Sharada and, 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 and Lord Shiva. Gaga Bhatta says that the text is based on Vishnu Dharmottara Puran. He divides the Abhisheka as the first coronation and annual coronation. The first Abhisheka requires a chariot, throne, sword, umbrella, chauris, flag, elephant, horse, garments, ornaments, astrologer, physician and priest. The references to all these implements occur in the Atharvavet Parishishta 3.1.13-3-4. 
the text discusses an auspicious period for the coronation in detail. Now we come to the ritual. In the ritual, a square-shaped mandala is to be drawn with cow dung and is decorated with rangolis, turmeric and kumkum. Water pots filled with water from the river Ganga are to be worshipped. The place is to be decorated with sandalwood paste, garlands and garments, roots of 100 herbs, gold, precious stones, seeds and leaves. Earth, horn of a bull, ivory, gorochana, lotuses of different types, black mustard, grass, devadaru wood are essential ingredients which are used for anointing the king. A priest adorned in new clothes and garments was supposed to tie a turban to the king. He should sit on a, a tiger, tiger skin. The tiger skin is mentioned in the Shatapata Brahmana. The tiger skin is mentioned in the Shatapata Brahmana in the context of the Rajasuya sacrifice. For the tiger skin stands for the beauty of Soma. It is with the intention that the king be endowed with beauty of a tiger that the king is made to either step, spread or sit on tiger skin. Such a king is supposed to ponder over the seven angers of the state and look after his subjects. The details are mentioned in the Vasishta Samhita. The Vishnu Dharmottar Puran 220 states that the body parts of the king designate should be anointed with earth from different places. The text cites some variations. I have given the, provided the, the, the list uh, of the, the body parts and the type of the earth in the, in my PPT itself, so which you can refer. After the ceremonial anointing, the king designate should bathe in water mixed with pancha gauvya seated on a badrasana and should be consecrated by four ministers representing four castes. Brahmin with a pot of gold filled with clarified butter from, from the east, Kshatriya with milk and silver pot from south, Vaishya in a copper pot with curds and Shudra in an earthen pot from north with water. They should be present. A Brahmin priest should shower water mixed with sandalwood, flowers, seeds and also juice of fruit using a pot made up of gold having 100 outlets on it. The Chatapata Brahmana also refers to a gold plate perforated with 100 holes or 9 holes. 100 holes signify 100 years of life. Then people from all Varanas should bathe the king with waters from, from number of sources or water got from the sacred rivers like Ganga, Yamuna, water from wells, springs and even oceans if available. The mantras from the Rajasoya are to be recited. This also incorporates chariot race, Shuna shape legend and game of dice. This portion of the ritual which involves the ritual bath of the king with water from different sources and the ritual of chariot race Shuna shape a legend and game of dice indicates the influence of the of the ritual of Rajasuna sacrifice over Shri Shiva Raja Vishaka Prayoga. In this way, in the first chapter, Gaga Bhatta has enumerated the rituals in a gist. The first chapter being the introductory chapter, Gaga Bhatta has mentioned important rituals in a nutshell. The ritual begins further with Ganesha Pujan. Before the king should make a commitment, before that, the king should make a commitment that he is undertaking this ritual for looking after the subjects and an empire. It is followed by Matruka Pujana, offerings of clarified butter and Nandi Shraddha. It is followed by appointing priests. Bra Brahmins belonging to four Vedas are appointed. Two priests belonging to the Rugveda family belonging to the Atri Gotra should stand in the east. Two from Rajyajurved belonging to the Kashyapa Gotra should stand in the south. Two Brahmins belonging to Samaved and belonging to the Bharadvaj Gotra should stand in the west. 
two Brahmins belonging to Atharaved and Vaishampayana Gotra should stand in the north. They, sh uh, they should be offered Madhu Parka. Then king ties a red thread to the priest and the entire city is to be decorated with flags. Prisoners are to be released and donations are to be given to priests and ministers. As a preparatory process for coronation, the Vishnu Dharmottar Puran mentions of selecting an astrologer priest. But there we see that the king designate is prescribed to select the The king designate is prescribed to select the officiating priest. The ritual then opens up with Vinayaka Shanti. Shantis are rituals of pacification. In the Rugveda, the, sham, the, the, the verb sham is used in the sense of to praise or to glorify. The Nighandu notes this sense also as Shrunati, Shamanati, Dhamati, Vadhakaramanaha using in the ninth class of the conjugation. The Dhatu Patha says that Shamu Upashayane and mentions to quiet or to appease or to pacify. The Atharaveda regards Shanti as a pacification of whatever is maleficent and cruel or sinful. The Vinayaka Shanti is also known as Ganapati Pujan according to Mahamohopadhyaya P.V. Kani. It is performed at the commencement of rituals, the fruit of which is averting obstacles. The Dharma Sindhu mentions of the word Nirvigna Phala Praptyartham in the resolution. The place is to be decorated with rangolis and swastika mark and the center point is to be covered with a hide of a reddish bull. The four pots containing water and clay are to be placed on heaps of grains. Images of Vinayaka and his mother Ambika are to be placed. Offerings are to be given to Mita, Sammita, Shala, Katankata, Ushmanda, and Rajaputra, who are the six Vinayakas, as per the Yajna Valka Smriti. The Shivarabhachabhishek Prayoga quotes passages from the Mitakshara, offerings of flesh, fish, sura, sweet dumplings, fried items are to be given. A detailed study of the Prayoga and the Yajna Valka Smriti indicates that the Vinayaka Shanti is influenced by the Yajna Valka Smriti. The Smriti mentions of placing the offerings on the crossroads. The prose portion of Shri Shiva Rajabhisheka Prayoga mentions the same. The next Shanti is the Aindri Shanti, which is in this Shanti, the king designate should have a vegetarian meal and should sleep on the ground. A gigantic flag is to be hoisted and a pandal is to be erected. The hoisting of the gigantic flag appears to be a remnant of the Indra Dhajotsava. After propitiating Varun, four pots of water are to be placed invoking the four Vinayakas and Indrani. Earth from the rat hole, bank of the river, yard of a potter's place and prostitute's residence and royal palace are to be collected along with a number of ingredients including precious stones. Collection of earth has similarity with that of the collection of Sambharas in the Vedic sacrifice. The Sambharas include sand, saline water, saline earth, earth dug up by rats, earth from ant hill, clay from the lake which never dries up, pebbles and gold according to the Taitariya Brahmana. They are collected in a sieve and the king is consecrated with water through the sieve. Mantras invoking the gods of the different directions are recited where east, east with Indra, south with Yama, west with Varun, north with Soma, Dhruva, uh, Dhruva with Vishnu, middle with Vayu and top with Bhuraspati are to be propitiated. Brahma is invoked with all the directions together. This list is a bit different from the list of eight guardians of the directions. Further, 
This is the popular version, and this is the version which is uh, followed in the Shiva Raja Bishaka Prayoga. Flour made up of black lentils is applied to the head of the king designate, and he is made to clad in new garments with incense. Indrani is propitiated for progeny and good fortune. Offerings in the form of flesh, fish, sura, vegetables and cooked foods are placed. Prayers to please the Vinayakas are uttered and Dakshinas are to be given. The day ends with the offerings of Ishana which involves the recitation of Rudradhyaya. This is followed by the third day which is the Griha Shanti. Aditya, Mangala, Buddha, Bruhaspati, Shukra, Shani, Rahu and Ketu are invoked. This is followed by invocation to presiding deities, namely Rudra, Uma, Skanda, Vishnu, Brahman, Indra, Yama, Kala and Chitragupta. The second cluster of deities is Agni, Apas, Bhumi, Narayana, Indra, Indrani, Prajapati, Sarpa and Brahman. 27 constellations are propitiated with verses based on the Vishnu Dharmottara Purana. The mantras enumerated in this portion of the text are cited in the Athalaveda Parishishta of the Nakshatra Kalpa. The fourth day is left vacant as it is Tuesday and Naomi. No ritual is to be performed on this day as per the Vishnu Dharmottara Purana. The fifth day has Nakshatra Yadnya, which is, uh, which is to be performed with images of 28 Nakshatras. They are propitiated with mantras from the Atharaveda and they are to be given to the Brahmanas. The sixth day is the Niruti Yaga. A fire hearth is to be established in the southwest direction of the Pandal. An image of Niruti is to be placed on, on the right side of the fire made, made up of clay and riding a donkey clad in black garments and facing the north. An offering is to be given. Flowers, gar gar garments are to be in black color. Naivedya is made up of kurusara grains that is a dish containing sesame, rice and peas. The king should sit facing the Niruti. The offerings are made, made up of rice, barley, clarified butter with a pungent odor, flesh, hooves of bull, uncooked, uncooked flesh, etc. The Rajasana section of the Shatapatha Brahmana mentions of the Niruti sacrifice given at the residence of the discarded king. Although the details of the sacrifice are unmentioned, the offering is of black rice and the donation is of black cow. On the seventh day, the, the main ritual of Angri Shanti is performed. An image of Indra made in gold is to be placed on the on a white cloth which covers the which covers the bull's hide. It is worshipped by 16 Upacharas. A charu to Indra is offered in the fire. Mantras from the Atharaveda 1928 are recited. And the conclusion. Suktas to Darbha are recited for the destruction of foes. The king is to be protected from his enemies as well as old age and death. Darbha is regarded as the arbor of, of Indra and enhancer of Kshatriyanes. Donations are given to Brahmanas which includes a village, wealth and image of Indra. Now, on the day of the coronation, Four pots made up of gold, silver, copper and clay are placed in the east, south, west and north respectively which had clarified butter, milk, curds and water. A seat of Audumbara is made and pots having waters from the rivers and oceans, precious gems, incense, flowers, fruit, herbs were kept ready. The Rajasura section of the Shatapatha Brahmana Mentions of Udumbara branch being used in one of the sacrifices for Udumbara stands for sustenance. It mentions of a seat made up of Khadira wood for growth. However, the Punarabhisheka section of the Aitreya Brahmana mentions of a seat of Udumbara wood for the tree stands for vigor. Then a homer which involves Brahmanas from all shakhas 
japakas recite mantras the doorkeepers were assigned proclamations then the king was was anointed with the earth from different places head is the peak of the mountains and hills ears indra's place of worship his neck palace courtyard his heart earth dug up by the tusk of a, of the elephant his arms earth dug out by a serpent his back his sides earth from the bank of the river and horn of a bull waist is the yard of the prostitute elephant stable his then his eyebrows with and cowpen his knees earth from the horse's stable his thighs his feet with earth from the chariot wheel entire body earth from the river ganga after the bath he is clad in white garments turban and ornaments and is seated on the seat covering the tiger skin he proclaims that he is ascending the seat of samrajya that is universal sovereignty bhojya that is enjoyment swarajya that is independent rule vairajya means without king parameshthya superiority rajya kingship maharajya supreme kingship adhipatya authority prayers are given are, are recited as follows let the vasus bestow luster and wealth from the east rudra from the south for victory adityas from the west for growth vaishwadevas from the north for nourishment guardians from all directions should bestow victory on the king the, he then ascends the throne this means that he was consecrated as indra on the stool of udumpara now on the throne there is the replica of indra this portion has a striking similarity with the portion from the aitareya brahmana indra was consecrated in this manner in the aindrabhishek of the aitareya brahmana in this way the the king becomes the replica of the uh, of indra on the earth he is consecrated he is consecrated with the waters from the uh, waters by the ministers belonging to all the four varanas eight kumarikas and married and married women perform nirajana vidhi he takes a chariot ride along with the prince with the umbrella and chauris then the king places dice with 16 8 or 4 dice and bec and becomes victorious this is very much similar to the game of dice mentioned in the shatapatha brahmana rajasuya section the priest and the astrologer should proclaim the lineage of the king thus the prayoga of gaga bhatta is a combination of vedic and puranic rites Gaga Bhatta has made ample use of texts like the Atharva Veda, Aitreya Brahmana, Taitreya Brahmana, Shatapatha Brahmana, Vishnu Dharma Uttar Puran, Yajna Vilkas Murti, and Atharva Veda Parishistas. Exhaustive usage of these texts gave a religious sanction to Shivaji, to Chhatrapati Shivaji, as a sovereign king. While applying the theory of Vladimir Volkov, Shivaji was accepted as a king by a small group of people. his own men on the micro level proclamation of his sovereignty through the coronation ceremony gave chhatrapati shivaji maharaj an acceptance on the universal level or macro level even by his opponents however the story of the coronation does not ends does not end here after the coronation under the supervision of gaga bhatta it is believed that there were number of ill omens faced by chhatrapati shivaji maharaj a tantric named nishchalpuri goswami arrived at the conclusion that as the coronation had some lacune in it the uh, shivaji maharaj had to face ill effects the story of the second coronation is mentioned in an introductory part of the text called shivaraja shivaraja rajya abhishek kalpataru it mentions of the death of shivaji shivaji maharaja's queen kashibai fire at the pratapgarh temple death of the commander in chief pratapgarh guzar death of the queen mother jizabai and the falling of meteors 
as per beliefs during the medieval period, it was assumed that the coronation ceremony conducted under the guidance and supervision of Gaga Bhatta was inauspicious. Therefore, a second coronation following tantric rites was undertaken by Nishchal Puri Goswami. The rituals of this coronation are briefly encoded in Sri Shivaraja Raja Abhishek Kalpataru. This text is divided in eight sections called Shakha. It has been compiled by Govind Barve, the son of Narayan from Kudal in Konkan region. The first Shakha enumerates the background of Nishchal Puri as a Tantric, a Japaka and having knowledge of the Yajurveda. The second Shakha enlists the ill omens or misfortunes and the need to perform the second coronation. Govind Barve has left no stone unturned in lengthening the list of misfortunes, some of which <laughs> historians like Bendre, Esar Sharma, etc. say occurred before the first coronation. The third Shakha criticizes Gaga Bhatta for insulting Nishchalapuri and his followers and not permitting them to partake some portion of Dakshinas distributed during the first coronation. The fourth Shakha mentions that mentions the uh, that offerings needed to be given to mountains, Shirka Devi, lions of the throne during the coronation. The fifth Shakha notes that Sh Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj agreed to perform the second coronation under the guidance of Nishchalpuri. In fact, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was advised to merely perform the ritual and not accept the mantra Upadesha, which he ignored. The sixth Shakha mentions animal offerings, Pashubali, given by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj to the lions encircling the throne. The East has Simha. The East has Simha, Southeast has Hariyaksha, South has Panchasya, Southwest has Kesarin, West has Mugendra, Northwest has Shardula, North has Gajendra, and Northeast has Hari. The seventh Shakha mentions that Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was seated on a silver seat and was given a mantra by Nishchal Puri. The goddess to be propitiated was Tripura. The concluding Shakha discusses about the glory of the royal assembly. The Abhisheka mentioned by Nishchal Puri does not indicate any references from variety of texts unlike that of Gaga Bhatta. Unlike Sri Shivaraja Abhisheka Prayoga, the focus of the text appears to be that of self-appeasement rather than describing the ritualistic details of the Tantric coronation. It is a brief narrative of what commenced on the Lalita Panchame day rather than a manual to be followed by future kings. Gaga Bhatta's Prayoga seems to be guiding text for coronations of future. But one cannot deny the fact that Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj agreed to perform the second coronation, which indicates a shift of faith from Vedic Puranic traditions to Tantric tradition. The, the first text is known as Sri Shivaraja Abhisheka Prayogaha, that is Shivaha Nama Raja Tasya Abhishekaha. The second is one is Shivaha Nama Raja Shivaraja Sya Raja Abhishekaha Eva Kalpataru. A clearly come your right for betterment of future. The, the prior one was proposed by uh, proposed to be the role model. Was, uh, the prior one was proposed to be a role model for future coronations. The later one was the remedy to ward off evil. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj considered to perform the second coronation indicates strong belief in omens and rituals. Such the observations can be drawn from the study of these two texts. Firstly, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was a king who ruled one kingdom. Secondly, Sri Shivaraja Abhisheka Prayogaha was written as a model text for all the Kshatriya kings to em emulate upon. But the Shivaraja Abhisheka Kalpataru was written as a remedial measure for dealing with exceptional situations that is failure of the first coronation. It also indicates Vedic tradition and Tantric tradition contradictory to each other. This underlines a fact that the coronation ritual, Vedic as well as Tantric, was performed by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj as a part of socio-political de design of attaining legitimacy and hierarchy on one hand and to reduce strains and frustration 
caused by caused of uncertainties and rationally in explicable occurrences in life on the other thank you so with this i thank the department of sanskrit for giving me the opportunity to to present my work on the occasion of the 60th uh, the diamond jubilee year of the department thank you